Hi, I'm Josh Robin. Uh, I'm Director of Innovation and Special Projects at the MBTA, but more importantly, I'm a Northeastern uh, alum, uh, and I'm excited to be here. Uh, first off, I just want to say thank you uh, for keeping me away from the Somerville public meeting tonight. <laughs> um, we to like 12, and you guys are already a lot nicer. Um, and, 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 and surprisingly, the projector works a lot better. Um, but thank you for being a part of this, and uh, it's actually kind of refreshing to talk about some of the things that TU is doing to move forward. Um, and some of the things we're doing on uh, really the customer-facing technology side that um, are allowing us to bring our customers better service uh, at, at a lower cost uh, to the T. And so I'm going to talk really about two things. One is uh, our initiative to make real-time information available to customers, and then I'm going to talk about how the approach we've taken there that's been very successful, successful is being applied to uh, other challenges that we face. Uh, and in talking about that, uh, I'll start with a slightly different question, which is, uh, why is it so easy to find real-time weather reports? Uh, you know, it's everywhere, right? It's, a, it's in front of the Walgreens, and it's on the TV, and it's on your phone. Uh, and, and the reason why is because National Weather Service information is open. Um, the, the National Weather Service uh, makes their data available to pretty much anyone who wants it, and it ends up everywhere. And so you have a lot of choices. Uh, a couple years ago, our riders used to ask, why is it so hard to find out where the next bus is? Uh, and we haven't quite reached Nirvana yet, um, but here, here was you at the, here was someone at the bus, suffering, shivering, you know, doing the whole Boston thing, uh, wondering where the bus is. And there are really two reasons why, and uh, we, looked at, we looked at that and we said, why is this the case? And, and one reason why is because T information was closed. You know, uh, we seem to think that we knew the most about uh, the T uh, and how people use it and what they want to know about it, and so we didn't share our information with others. Uh, we weren't like the National Weather Service. Uh, the second reason is what I call uh, the Holy Grail here. Oh yes, Washington DC. Um, which everyone you know sees these and they go into whole fits about it and they come back to Boston and they say, we really need these here, like get it together people. Um, the, the challenge with signs is that they're really expensive and they take a lot of time to put up. Uh, and that made a lot of sense in the 1990s, but so did outfits like these. So, um, <laughs> you know, we, we know the times have changed, uh, and people dress more like this now. Uh, and people have devices that look more like this. Um, and we said, is there really, is there a possibility to tur turn around this traditional model, which is putting up a sign, maybe building your own website, and then sharing your data, and try to take a different approach, and, Again, maybe be open, uh, like the National Weather Service. And so we did a couple things. We reached out to local developers, software developers, smart folks. There are a lot of them here in town, uh, most of them in Northeastern. Um, and we said, come in. We want you to do stuff with our data. We want you to answer that question, where's the bus? We'll tell you where the buses are, but it's up to you to find a way to deliver this to our customers. Uh, and we, we challenged uh, developers. And we said, could you make it as easy to find the bus as it is to find the weather? Um, and so we opened up this data. We opened it up at lunch at a developer conference. Uh, I don't know why we held it at MIT, but we did. Um, and within an hour, someone built it out. And within a couple days, there was a website with this information. And within a week, there was a desktop widget, which all look kind of silly today. But if you go on your smartphone today, or your phone, or your computer, or go to mbta.com slash apps and just type in MBTA, you will find you know, more than 50 apps that, that answer, uh, you know, where's the T? That will show you where your bus is and when it's coming and give you alerts and other information. And uh, if you haven't downloaded one of those apps and you're a 39 bus rider like me, uh, you should. Or if you're a subway rider, you should, you should download an app as well. Uh, this information is now even available uh, on Google. Um, and so, you know, just kind of looking forward, and we're, we're here, I think, more to answer your questions and have a conversation than anything else, but the question really is, you know, what's next? And so, uh, oh, oh, that's not next. Um, <laughs> and that kind of brings us back to, uh, to the famous countdown side that everyone's so in love with. I think what we proved is that, um, that there might be a different approach. And what we call that approach is bring your own infrastructure. Uh, and so, you know, for the bus and waiting for the bus, your countdown sign is now in your pocket. And the question for us is in terms of customer information, those core customer interactions, 
where are other opportunities like that one going forward? And so the next opportunity for us, we really think is these. Um, we have a lot of vending machines. These vending machines cost, say, $50,000 to put out there. Um, you know, you, you always want them when you can't find them. And then we, we also have <coughs> tickets that look like these. So on our commuter rail system, uh, tickets don't look much different than they did in, at the end of the Second World War. I mean, it's a paper ticket, it's pretty basic. And uh, the, the question is, could we do the same thing for uh, ticketing and riding the T um, as we did for real-time information, taking a bring your own infrastructure approach? And so uh, for years, we've talked about bringing Charlie, say, to the commuter rail. And it's looked like this. It's a lot of gating, a lot of handheld devices. It's like Star Wars with all the stuff they have. It's 50 to $70 million of infrastructure. Um, and, and so again, we're asking, what do you already have in your pocket? Uh, and we're trying to bring it back to the devices you already have. And I'll end with this image, which is that a lot of people at Starbucks now, or if you use a, a, a service called Level Up, pay for things using just uh, a basic smartphone without any of the whiz -bang stuff you may have heard about, like NFC. And so this is something uh, we're going to try to bring, I think, to the commuter rail uh, in the coming months. And uh, we're going to try to find other ways to use the infrastructure in your pocket to pay for things uh, in the coming years. And, uh, that's really it. Uh, I'm here for questions, and I can take general T questions after the other folks for that. Thank you.